Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's Tools, Tips, and Talk, where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to do a fluted wire inlay, so a spiral fluted handle. If you haven't seen the Ocean Sunset Dagger video from last week, definitely go check that out because that's the handle we're going to show. But let's get into it, show you how to do this. Since I'm starting with a rectangular block, I take it to the grinder and round off one end so I can chuck it up in the lathe. Then I'm just going to make a nice smooth cylinder and get ready for shaping. If I had a wood lathe, I'd use that so it didn't make as much of a mess. Now I'm just going to drill a quarter inch hole through the handle. We're going to need this in an upcoming step. I should have used a shorter bit here because you can see there's a little play. I decided to use my handheld stylus setup for shaping the handle. This works really well. I have a video on this, so I'll put a link up in the corner. Before I remove it from the lathe, I want to sand this all to 220 so it's nice and smooth. So let's talk a little bit about this jig. I originally created this to do wire wraps of handles, but it works really well for this purpose. You can see it's just made from a piece of angle iron, and on the right is a ratchet style wrench that I've just welded here. This way it only spins in one direction, which is great when you're doing wire wrapping. The handle is just secured on either end with a nut, and these discs have lines on them in a pie format. And here I've got eight lines, because I'm going to have eight flutes. So I got all this done on the lathe, and now I've got it uh, rigged up in my little spinning system here. And this is to put a grid system on it to get ready for the wire inlay and the spiral flutes. So the way this works is these dials have kind of these lines on them, and the same, um, the same lines are on the other side. So what we do is take a pencil and draw... Okay, this spins, like for here, we'll take a pencil, draw a line across here, spin it to the next one, draw a line, draw a line, and then hold the pencil and draw lines this way, and that'll give us a grid system. Then we'll connect all the grids, and that's how we'll get nice even spirals all the way around. So let's recap a bit. The number of lines on the disc, that's how many flutes you're going to have. The number of circular lines is going to determine how much they rotate around the handle. So if you have three circular lines, which gives you four sectors, then four divided by eight is a half, so your flutes are going to rotate halfway around the handle. If you wanted them to rotate fully around the handle, you'd have to put eight sectors. So now I've just taken a marker and I've kind of connected all the corners of the grid, and that gives us our spiral flutes. So now I'm going to take my high-speed rotary tool and just go over these lines and then the long process of uh, using a file and filing these out. Having a high-speed rotary tool here isn't absolutely necessary, but it sure helps and it makes it about three times faster. You could just do it with needle files, but like I said, it's going to take you forever. Now I move on to a round needle file. That just helps straighten the line and any little whoopses that you might have done with the rotary tool. Now I move to a chainsaw file, a pretty rough one, but this is where you can really refine it and make sure all of your flutes are kind of equidistant from each other and nice and smooth. I also want to mention our channel sponsor, Maritime Knife Supply. If you need anything knife related, whether it's steel, ferric chloride, handle materials, spacers, you name it, epoxy, anything you need for knife making, check out Maritime Knife Supply. The link's down in the description. You can shop in US dollars, take advantage of that US to Canadian exchange rate. They have quick shipping as fast as any of the other US sites, so go check them out. Between each flute, you want to leave a little flat spot, just less than an eighth of an inch. That's where you're going to create a little channel for your wire to go. Again, I did this with a high-speed rotary tool and then moved over to that round needle file. What you see here is the completed handle sanded to a thousand, buffed and polished. So let's talk about the actual wire. There's all kinds of different combinations you can use, whether it's copper wire, silver wire, gold wire, whatever you want. Just make sure you anneal it first. You can also control how you're going to twist it. Are you going to double it up or triple it up? That's going to change the way it looks. 
I usually do a few little test pieces and twist it so I know what I'm going to get. All right, so I've got the black wire for the inlay kind of tied up to this drill and then way over there in the vise and now we're going to spin it. You need to stop the drill every once in a while just to see how tight your twist is. So here's our polished and buffed handle and here's the wire. So we're going to be placing this in those little channels. So let's go do that. So I'm about to do the wire inlay. Uh, I've got my GRS high speed rotary tool here with a tiny little uh, kind of a straight burr in it. And what I'm doing is just drilling a hole here, drilling a hole opposite where it's going to go, and then putting a little mark here because we want the wire to sit flat while this is on. So we're going to do that on both ends, and we'll have a little channel for the wire to sit in. All right, so we got all our little holes done. Now it's time to bend the wire, put the wire into those, kind of glue it in, and then bend it around. And I like to use this um, Starbond super fast glue with this tiny little applicator tip. It really is the best stuff for this. Um, there's a link down in the video description if you want to get some of this stuff. I'm putting a dab of glue in the hole, putting the wire in, and then putting it down the channel. Here I started to put a little glue into the channel and then press it with my finger, but I found I kept sticking it to my finger. It's much easier if you put the wire in the hole, put it in the channel, and then put it in the hole on the other side before you start gluing it down. And when I do the end, I just kind of like to curve it around to get it to go in the hole. And then you can kind of push it down in with your pliers. That's really all there is to it, folks. I decided to buff the top of the wire just to get that little ridge of uh, copper, which I think looks really cool. Thanks for joining me, folks. We'll see you on the next one.